Welcome to the RBC Spotlight Space. My name is Anastasia Busis. Day eight of the Olympic Games is heating up, especially on the track. Andre de Grasse threw to the semis. He won his heat. He made it look easy. It was like he was floating, uh, set to do big things. He's on track to do big things here. Big shout out to Kylie Moss. She nabbed her second silver medal of the tournament, uh, of the competition, swimming tournament, sorry. Um, in the 200 meter backstroke, the women are still on fire in the pool. Pool party, they're gonna contest for another medal in a little less than 24 hours in the four by 100 medley relay. And Jenna Bell going for a medal in diving, the three meter springboard. Again, little less than 24 hours. She has her sets on a medal and to break it down, we're joined by none other than Mr. Alex Despati, uh, two time Olympic silver medalist, nine time Commonwealth Games champion, four time Pan Am game champion, and the only diver to be world champion in all three individual categories, the one, the three, and the 10 meter platform. I need a glass of water yeah. <laughs> time I say your resume. <laughs> Anastasia, not only is it morning in Canada here, and I have the morning, uh, you know, puffy eyes, uh, wake up, glow. and now, and now you're you're bringing up all these uh, all these memories for me. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, and it's great to be uh, to be on the show. Thank you, um, Missy, my friend. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing uh, better, I should say, because uh, it's been a roller coaster here uh, for myself. But uh, getting going here with the digital team and, and being able to be on on different shows, uh, following the Olympics, I've been I've been a spectator. I'm looking aside the TV here, uh, you know, watching the track and field uh, right now. But uh, you know, it's been uh, it, it's always amazing when Olympics happen. To be able to 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 watch as a spectator, you know, as a retired athlete, and 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 see what's going on and understand what's going on as well. Well, let's go there. What have you seen in the diving competition? Well, there's been some surprises. There's been some great performances uh, from Jenna Bell and and Melissa on the synchronized uh, three meter uh, event. Obviously, that was, you know, an amazing silver medal. Uh, Melissa has been working so hard just to get there. Uh, you know, obviously, Jenna Bell has her her status uh, established for for a long time now. But for for her partner Melissa to get that medal, I think is um, is something that that was very special. And then on the men's side, uh, you know, the, the the Canadian men weren't so so fortunate to get a medal, but. To see Tom Daly, the star of of diving, get a, a gold medal with uh, with Maddie Lee, a, a little another kid that he met, you know, when when, when they were young, and now uh, partnered up uh, to 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 win that gold medal, to be ahead of China, to be ahead of everybody, and and be Olympic champions, I think is um, is is very nice for for the sport of diving. I would agree. He's such a star. Yeah. Um, let's go to three meter springboard. Yes. First and foremost, I, I just can't believe what you guys can do. Um, I'm afraid of heights. I, I don't think I could ever do that. But three meter springboard, uh, Jenna Bell, of course, Pam Ware, Canadian medal threats. And um, I want to throw to a clip of Pam Ware. Okay. She said in the mix zone, um, you know, on her takeoff, she felt like she had landed a little close to the end of the board. And uh, I would love just for you to break it down for me. Let's, uh, let's sure. show the clip first and foremost. Here's Pamela Ware of Canada, her fifth and final dive, sitting ninth after round number four. Had an off dive in round four, trying to finish with something to build confidence here. Oh my goodness. The worst possible outcome for Pamela Ware. And that's an automatic zero and everybody is just speechless. Well, I'm I'm close to being speechless uh, as well because uh, uh, you know that happens at the worst possible moment for her. Um, what happened there is when your toes are off the, the end of the board and she's trying to go backwards, um, it, it can get real real tricky uh, to be able to do a, a, a nice dive. Um, and and 
that's happened to me before. It, it could be the nerves. Uh, I understood that she, you know, had a, she was trying to come off a, another bad dive. Um, but for Pamela, unfortunately, the, the adventure is over because that, that reverse, uh, you know, one, one and a half with three and a half twist is a high uh, degree of difficulty dive for her. Uh, she was obviously aiming to get more points from it uh, and try and, and, and even challenge in the finals uh, uh, to, for a medal and, and, you know, get three points at the end. But in that condition, with the approach coming into the board, toes off the, the, the end, there's not much you can do there. And that's that really is, like the commentary says, the worst possible outcome. Yeah, devastating for Pam Ware. For sure. Uh, Jen, Jen, of course, has advanced to the finals. What is she doing well, and what does she need to do to ensure that she finds herself on the podium? Well, for, for Jen, um, and, and knowing her quite well, it's going to be managing her emotions, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. just, just stay focused, stay neutral, just fo focus on every dive. She, is, she has the potential to be... Uh, uh, world number one. She has the potential to win this competition. She has also a, a, a big, a high degree of difficulty dive uh, in, in the front two and a half with two twists, which could, you know, change the game for, for everyone else as well. Um, but uh, she, she needs to really focus on staying calm uh, and, and, and doing what she knows how to do best, which is, which is dive. And then when, when she does, you know, it's, it's magical. It's, it's just beautiful. And what, what is she doing so well in this Olympic competition? Well, so far, um, what I've loved to see, what I love to see in, in the synchronized event is, um, you know, they had a, not, not a rocky start in the first two dives, but an okay start. But then they, you know, she really got focused and, and everything came together. So um, the fact that she's able to, to, do, to do that right now um, is good because in the individual event uh, that's coming up for her uh, in the final, especially, as long as she, she's able to stay in that zone, stay in that, in, in that focused zone um, and, and, and do what she knows to do best um, is, is going to be great things coming up. I want to quickly pivot um, from diving, but I also want to pick your brain on Simone Biles. Um, she has pulled out of the vault and uneven bars um, because she's uh, she's struggling with her mental health, unfortunately, and she's also struggling with what she calls the twisties. Right. Now, I never did I never did gymnastics. I never dove. But as someone who has flipped about a million times in the air, what are the twisties? Well, I'm, I'm, it's surprising to me um, this time around that we've actually put um, a name to this thing because this has happened to me uh, in the past, doing obviously a, a similar sport, a twisting dives. Um, at one morning, you know that you can do it because you've done it a thousand times. And then one day, it just, it just goes away. So, um, you know, her, her pulling out, I think, is, is, a, is a good decision because it can get very dangerous. Uh, I've had many wipeouts because of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I land in the water. She lands on ground. So um, I think for, for security reasons, that's a, a great option as well for her to, to just say, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break from this. Um, but it shows that it can happen to anyone, even yeah. even the even the best of the best. You know, Simone Biles obviously needs no needs. Yeah, she's the goat, of course. Well, she doesn't need to prove anything to anyone. She is no. the queen, right? So, um, yeah. but it but it happened to her. So, um, it, it it at one point something in our head just goes away. I, 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 it's hard to explain. Um, what, what does it re actually feel like, Alex? So when it happened to me, uh, personally, it, it's just, you start twisting and then you come out of that. I came out of that twist position, just a fraction too late because something happened in my head. And, um, 
you know, you get lost. You don't know where up or down is. You don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. And then it ended up in a in a big wipeout for me. But um, luckily, and, and I ran into Kyle Schufelt uh, yesterday, and, and we spoke about that. And, and he says, the only person in the world that could have landed on her feet in that condition, because clearly it, it showed that she was lost, is Simone Biles. So um, that shows on top of it her talent. But for now, there's going to be some work to do. You go back to training. You go back to um, the the essentials. You, you go back to to really get the beginning uh, uh, to, to, to come back from something like this. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I know I woke you up out of bed, um, but it's always so lovely to see your face. And uh, thank you for you. Even the morning face is going to do it. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, and thank you for breaking it down uh, regarding Simone Biles. We wish her well. And Jenna you Bell, and hoping a medal. Oh, yeah. And you're doing uh, some great work over there. So uh, I'm, I've been watching, been keeping up. So uh, and today it's going to be a, another big day for, for Jenna Bell. Thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate your time. Cheers. We caught up with uh, three-time Olympian Melissa Bishop in Riyagu while you were sleeping, and I would love just to throw, excuse me, to a clip of her. Bishop of Canada, there she is. Fastest in the field this year, really. 157 this woman, so she's in great shape. Athletes away. Bishop, though, happy to hold the inside line. The silver medalist a couple of years ago. Everybody sitting on her shoulder, including Martinez. Their potential. Oh, a little trip from Bishop as she touches the inside of the track. Now it's all about time. What can she do as she comes into the final 50 meters? Now Bishop opens the stride up going hard to the line. Let's check the clock. And Melissa's just going through the through the works now. She just looks totally relaxed, very much in, in control. But here comes Bishop as she did in the semi-final. The Canadian is working hard. Asama Sova though is holding the ball off. Asama Sova is still there. Is she gonna do it? Bishop is coming through, is she? She is not. It's gonna be a Asama Sova. Bishop in second. Sum is third. This is really, truly a dream come true. And um, I'm just really, I'm really happy. Such an inspiration and such a pillar of Team Canada. Uh, we caught up with her while you were sleeping again and learnt of a last minute hamstring injur injury that unfortunately saw her Olympics and a little bit early. And uh, here's what she had to say. How are you doing, my friend? I'm okay. It's been a, a tough go. The last 24 hours has been pretty hard. Um, but I think what's making it okay is I've had such an outpouring of support from my supporters at home and from my team here. Um, you know, this is not my first rodeo. It's it's really unfortunate that I couldn't show up 100%. Hamstring injury, what happened? Yeah, about seven days ago, we were in a training run um, and it kind of just went on us and I haven't been able to recover from it in time. My entire team, everybody I would need was here, thankfully, and they worked so tirelessly to try and get me back. But sadly, when you come into the games and you want a medal, you need to be 100%. And I, it wasn't 100%. It looked like there was a little bit of jostling as well in that final turn mm -hmm. and that you got boxed in. Was I reading the race correctly? Yes, Oftentimes in a heat, though, because they tend to go so slow that that's a very normal thing okay. to happen. Um, a lot of it is you just sit until 600 and then the pace starts to go, which is exactly what happened in our race. So it's not a it's not a foreign thing. It's not a new thing. It's been a bumpy ride mm -hmm. for so many people to get to, to Tokyo 2020. Yeah. Um, and it's cliche, but it's cliche because there's some truth to it. 
the, the journey dictates the destination. What mm -hmm. did your journey look like getting here? My journey wasn't easy. I think it's been hard on a lot of athletes this year with COVID and facility closures and access to competitions, quarantines. Uh, it's been really hard. It, this is not a typical buildup to the Olympics. Um, so personally for us, we were able to do the best that we could. Uh, we went to Victoria for three months, my family and I, to train with my coach, Trent, who lives out there. We were able to get to the States. I had to stay there for four weeks because I couldn't come home and afford to do the two-week quarantine, um, like waste time away from the track. But we we survived. Like We got there. We still trained really hard. We We worked really, really hard to take care of all the details. And seven days ago, I would have told you that there was a Canadian record on the line and possibly a medal. But there are things that are out of my control. And sadly, you know, when you're this fit and, you know, the Olympics can, this is the ultimate goal out, out of the Olympics. We don't get to do this every year. This is every four mm -hmm. years. And so you ride this really fine line of, of fitness and injury at this point in the game. And we just kind of tipped off that line a little bit and, and I couldn't get back on in time. When you think back to this journey, what are you most proud of? Oh, I'm really proud that I agreed to take those scary steps that I was maybe resistant to in the past few years. I worked with a nutritionist for the first time really to, to hone in on what, what I could do in terms of performance nutrition. And I got in the weight room and I put on a lot more muscle mass mm -hmm. and I've been the leanest I've ever been. And I took really great strides in my workout and we tried, we tried new things like, and I'm proud that it all worked out. Um, and I know given the chance and given a little bit more rest. And if I could control when the Olympics were, then I would have been okay, <laughs> but you can't, you can't do that. So I'm proud that I took risks because I, I think it would have been great. What have you learned about yourself? And I mean, this is not your first rodeo, as no. you said, London 2012, Rio 2016, but Tokyo 2020 is very unique. Yeah. I think I've learned that, you know, there's, especially this year that there's so much out of our control. And the biggest thing that you can do is, be in control of you and be flexible. I think that's been like our key term within our ter within our team right now is, is flexibility and just going with whatever life presents us because it, it's been a real journey this year. Your husband, OC, mm -hmm. has been your rock. Yes. What would you like to say to him? Oh, now you're going to make me cry again. Um, thank you for signing up every single day to do this. Um, from university, when we first met, he knew that this was my dream and he has done everything to make it happen. Um, he's been my biggest supporter uh, and he always, always will be there and he always will help me get to where I wanna go. What are your hopes and dreams for uh, your beautiful daughter, Corinne? Oh, Corinne. Um, that she finds something that she is totally in love with and she goes after what she wants. That was, I was given that opportunity from my parents and my family and I would love to provide that for her. We've had conversations about athletic mothers and what it means to be, you know, a working mom. Mm -hmm. What do you hope moms take from your story? Oh, for all the moms out there who just had a baby or who have kids, find yourself a wicked support team and you go after what you want because it will happen and it may not happen right away, but you can do this. Talking about a wicked support team, you were such a leader on team Canada, both in athletics and abroad. Um, you were a leader alongside Melinda Elmore and Aaron Brown. Mm -hmm. What would you like uh, all of team Canada to know? Team Canada needs to know that, we are so proud of every single performance that you put out there. Even if it's not the performance that you want, we will stand behind you 100%. And we know the work that everyone has put in to get here. I am so proud to compete alongside this team. Canadians are incredibly proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, it's impossible to have a, a crystal ball but what, in an ideal world, does the next six months look like for you? I think we're, ideally, I'm, go I'm going to heal um, my body and my mind, uh, spend some time with my family, 
and we'll get back to training soon. I love to hear it. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. Such an inspiration, unfortunate hamstring injury at the 11th hour. Uh, well, Melissa Bishop in Miyagu has changed the game for athletic mothers and uh, we all should thank her. Soph's Notes, everyone's favorite segment. I'm gonna say that for the next six days. <laughs> Join me, producer Soph. Isn't Melissa great? It was so lovely having she her is. on. Yeah, yeah she she's, she's awesome. Um, so today on Soph's Notes, I have something very serious to report. There has been a kidnapping, or should I say a moose napping? Oh, I don't even have my phone <laughs> the moose is on the loose. Yeah. Woo! Water polo and weightlifting bringing it home. Lucy's going home. A culprit moose snapped the iconic moose statue from out front of the athletes' village where Team Canada is sleeping in their beds and moved it yeah. somewhere. And the water polo team found it and returned it to its rightful place. So if I've dug into this and I will have a follow up if I learn more, but we don't know who the thieves are. They are still at large, Anastasia. This is like an episode of Law and Order. Like, I know. gosh, and that, that moose, I mean, the mo I don't know if it's a girl or a boy, I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they travel around every single Olympic. So I know that that moose, cause I met him in 2014, so I should say met her um, <laughs> in Sochi. That's like a 500 pound moose. Very heavy. Uh, only the water polo team could carry them. But yes, as I said, the culprit is still at large just because of all the COVID protocols. They're still obviously having a ton of fun in the athletes village, pulling some pranks. But if you know who, who did it, let us know yeah. in the comments because this is this is quite the fishy little story. This is going to be some investigative reporting. I'm going to uh, keep moving. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's throw up uh, the board. What can we look forward to within the next 24 hours? Of course, Penny Alexiak 4x100 meter medley relay final. If Canada comes away with a medal, Penny Alexiak at 21 years of age will become the most decorated Canadian Olympian of all time. Let that sink in. RBC Olympian as well, Jen Abel is going for a medal in less than 24 hours in the three meter springboard final. Big shout out to Mr. Alex Depati for breaking down her chances. And uh, thank you for joining us. Again, this is an interactive show. Hit us up anytime on social media. We wanna hear what you wanna talk about, what you wanna see, and uh, just appreciate you tuning in. So see you down the road and have a fantastic day, Canada.